Okay, for the third part, we're going to look at the ripple on the output voltage. What's going on in this is we have, remember this is a split secondary transformer, so there's two diodes and the secondary has two output waveforms. The black line is a bad choice of color, but too light. Uh, secondary we've been looking at is just this one, so the black line it goes up and down, that's our secondary waveform. At the very top is when diode 1 turns on, charges up our output capacitor and it bumps up a little. At the same time, the other uh, side of the secondary, split secondary, is going equal and opposite and it comes over here a half cycle later because it's 180 degrees out of phase or uh, negative of each other. Charges through diode 2, this is diode 1 here, and diode 2 turns on in this little uh, these little spots. In the middle though there's no diodes on and the only thing that we have going on is an RC circuit again. Both diodes are off. And let's uh, scroll down here on the analog power point. We just have an RC circuit so don't look at that yet. An RC circuit. Well I don't really want to do that exponential stuff again. Uh, to see how far that goes. It turns out this is really easy. I could calculate how much the diode turns on or how much uh, the voltage goes up, but I also know how much it drops. This is just an easier calculation. Okay, so back to our math. It turns out that the time constant for our, our load resistor and our capacitor is way bigger than 60 Hertz. When we look at this, we're going to approximate this red line as straight. It truly is exponential, but we zoom in close enough on anything, or at least on any real signal that we measure in electronics, it looks straight. If we approximate a voltage across the capacitor as falling at a constant rate, that's a constant current source, and that's even better. So our load is now, instead of a resistor, it's a constant current source. This makes our math a lot easier. What is that math? Well, we have to need our current source, V out, DC. I measured this as 27.8. We'll see that on the scope in a second. Four ohms, six, almost seven amps of current. That's why this thing gets warm. All right, well, my favorite book, one of my favorite books, uh, Art of Electronics, third edition is great. Well, uh, I saw this footnote the other day in some uh, reading and uh, I'll let's go three out of three. Don't memorize the equations. Remember how to de uh, derive. Don't waste brain power. I don't have very much as it is, so I need to be conservative. Well, let's remember uh, some basics. So farads, unit of farads is uh, means one coulomb per volt. Amperes are a coulomb per second. Well, I want ripple voltage, which is volts. Well, I have volts here. I can see that if I combine farads and current, or capacitance and uh, the current together, I can get the coulombs to cancel. I'm left with seconds, or volts per second, if I do the, get them in the right spot. And then, well, time is in here as well. We just have this time. How long does the capacitor discharge for? You can see that from here, this point, to this point is not one period of the input waveform. One period would be over to here. It's actually half because of the split secondary full wave rectifier thing. And really, in uh, the time that the capacitor is discharging is less than half a cycle. Let's just approximate it as half a cycle because uh, coming up with this is just not really worth your time. Uh, textbooks do it uh, and it's, it's not useful because we don't know enough about the transformer and the uh, other parasitics. So if we do that, we combine them together, we get delta V. Uh, if we take our current, load current, over our capacitance, we get coulombs per volt, or we end up with volts per second with these two units combined. Uh, we don't get Captain Planet, that's a that's different. And this is our period. Well, this is a period of 
our entire thing, we need half of that period. So the equation that, uh, that you might remember is I load over 2 times F times C. If we calculate that out uh, with our numbers, my calculator says, when I turn it on, says that we have that 49.5 millifarads, 260 hertz, I'm in the US, and 6.95 amps, I get 1.17 volts. So delta V is 1.2 volts. And because of how we set this up, this is a peak to peak measurement. So I'll put V, P, P. All right, well that was, I mean, this is all paper, right? It's bogus. Paperwork, bogus work. Well, engineering is, uh, it's useful to do stuff on paper because we can't always measure things. Or it's expensive to do that. Let's move up to the oscilloscope. Reminder, here's our load. It's been, it's been going for a while, so it's still pretty hot. Uh, capacitor, here's our setup. Channel one, channel two, channel three on the capacitor. Bump up to our oscilloscope. So I'm going to just trigger on the. You can remember what I'm triggering on. Turn this on, and we see the input waveform goes up and down. This is VS, one side of the diode. The green line, which you can't tell the colors or anything, is uh, the output voltage. It's mostly DC, but it has some ripple on it. If you look close, you see two bumps in there. It goes up and down and up and down. Let's look at this in a better situate, not situation, better, who knows what it is. Channel three, you remember, is also across the capacitor. If I turn that on, I have channel three's coupling set to AC, bandwidth limit, because these are 60 hertz, and I don't need all 70 megahertz. And all this is is zooming in on channel two, the outputs, to see the ripple, uh, ripple only. And so the input comes up, the diodes turn on. When the diode turns on, either one or two, output voltage rises, charges up. This little blip here is reverse recovery time with the silicon diode. It's really interesting, but not now. And then during this time, it looks like a ramp. It's really an exponential. Uh, and this is the, the ripple that we're talking about. So my measurements were set up and we have 990 millivolts peak to peak. If I round up and call that one volt peak to peak, remember we calculated 1.2 volts peak to peak. What's up? Why is this less? Well, it's less because we calculated assuming that our discharge time was the entire half cycle. We're not discharging for entire half cycle. Our interval is smaller. If our time is smaller, our delta V is smaller. So this is uh, this is right on. What did I do? Bump something. There we go. And that's how we calculate ripple. If you don't like that much ripple, you can increase the capacitor size. You can decrease the load. Uh, we can't change the frequency for these power supplies because it's just straight across the power line at 60 hertz. Uh, the solution for this ripple is, remember, side note, remember C uh, was also a surge current. So if we don't like ripple, we make C large. If C goes large, these poor diodes, which there's a huge stack of them, uh, the poor diodes are have to support a much higher surge current. So it's always a trade-off. We follow a raw uh, linear power supply like this with a voltage regulator, and then we're much... Uh, it's the best of both worlds, I guess. Thanks for watching.